All right, looking at the Dow first, and you can see that you got a shooting star. You got to remember also, at one point, this was completely red. That's why I said that we have to wait till the week is over. Don't try to jump in and say, listen, you know, you have to wait till candles close. And that's on all time frames, you know, so keep that in mind. Had a huge day yesterday. Volume was, uh, what was volume yesterday? 106. It was almost half of that today. Not saying that this means that it's, I would just, you know, like I said, I would expect some type of retracement at least uh, to give me an entry to go in. Don't worry about it just going straight up like this. And sometimes it could give you just a minor retrace and continue up like you saw last time. Or coming down, give you get minor retrace and come down, minor retrace, come down, minor retrace, come down. You just have to be aware of it. And that's the way trading goes. So right here, right now, you don't want to chase. If you got in today, then that's good. And hopefully you're peeling some profits on into strength. And uh, going from there, so let's see what the S&P 500 is doing. S&P 500 got above this previous uh, pivot point that we were talking about it getting below at one point. So now it got above yesterday and it continued above. So right now, if you're not in, you just wait to see if there's a retracement on lower volume and uh, continue to, to go higher. There's no reason to get ticked off to say, oh, I missed the move. You're always going to miss a move. You can't catch everything. So gapped up continue to the upside volume is going down but volume could go down on the way up and it could go down on the way up, um down so you kind of just want to see it from there you see that we have this next level of uh pivot point here so you know maybe we get a flag and continue to the upside to test recent highs all we're doing is tra trading the right side of the chart we got another hammer uh coming at the 10 above you can see here if i just adjust this that you have uh, higher lows in place, one, two, and you have this. So you want to extend this out. If I make this a little sharper, maybe to just the low, not to the low of the day, you can see this uh, uh, ascending triangle. And if I had just enough real estate to expand this out, maybe you would see that as well. So you have the composite. The composite, again, this was completely red. If you watch the videos that I, I spoke about, I, I've done video every day this week. I'm doing videos pretty much every day, every trading day at least. And you could see that I told them, because at one point this was completely red. I said, don't get over ambitious because at the end of the day, this thing could, could uh, become a hammer or something like that. Let the candle close. So said, so done. Um, I'm not predicting it. I'm just saying to be patient because it could have just continued to go down and then you just have some great setups to say, okay, I'm waiting for it to flag to the downside. I'm not predicting anything because, you know, you can't predict in this. You're just trying to have as high probability as possible. So it broke the pennant, came down, come back up, testing these highs, broke above it. And that we got to just gonna see, see how this stuff goes. We got the Russell 2000 cranking. Um, Go and test new highs. Um, maybe it gives you a retracement. Maybe it doesn't. Uh, you could trade the IWM as well. And um, it looked really good. I mean, it, it pretty much, you know, if that's not a strong day, I don't know what it is. It broke these previous highs and just, you know, got at it. So that looked good. Um, some names. Uh, Apple. Apple uh, is now given an engulfing pattern. So... This might be something good, but again, it's just back in this range of just ah. so, you know, if it could clear here, maybe get above here. Maybe you take a what would be considered a low risk trade. Let's look at the weekly. A lot of lines here. Sorry, let me clean this up. Actually, delete all the drawings because it's, it's just too much going on here. So um, you can see you don't know where, where this is going to go up or where this is going to go down. I mean, you have this pennant that is pretty much going right there. So my bias would be because you have higher lows here, here. And if this is a true pivot point, if it gets above this 496 area, and uh, if you get back to the daily, this 496 area is right here, then it could definitely move. I mean, it definitely moves back up to at least the 500. Um, so you just kind of just take it from there. So this engulf, I think this candle was actually red. So... And engulf this candle, and you maybe could get some more upside. So maybe you you wait for above this high, or maybe above this high. You know, it all depends on your risk parameters and what you feel comfortable with. 
you got Google. Uh, Google right now to me is just flagging. It's still uh, testing this upper line that we showed yesterday on the weekly, but it is giving a hammer. So at least you could say that the bulls have, you know, tried their best at this previous line of uh, resistant uh, support. So tested it one time, got there again and got there again. I mean, these aren't perfect, but trading isn't perfect. So if you're looking for perfect to the cent retracements to support and resistance, eh, I'm not going to be able to give you that. Most people won't be able to give you that either. So don't have too much of a, a high expectation for everything. So you see that going on. It might be a flag to the upside. Like I said, I want to see a higher low on that. Tesla. Uh, Tesla gave you a... Eh, it's still under the 10, still needs to get clear above this channel. I mean, when it does, it could rock it off like we saw with uh, Solar City crushed it today. And I told you guys yesterday, I said, listen, I'm not predicting, but I said, man, if it can get over this $40 level, I mean, go look at the video yesterday. It says if it could get over that $40 level, we have some good chance to really move. Uh, some other movers today was Chipotle. Chipotle continued to the upside, closed up strong, almost 2%. You have uh, Win did really well continue to the upside um good 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 sign um you have clr which i was looking at eh, it's doing okay um you could roll up your stop regarding that i had crzo uh that one did okay as well um was keeping a lot of stuff on the, the radar and kind of really didn't trade much at all today just kind of just really want to see what's going on because i want the probability of my trades to be a lot more, is a lot more important to me than just trading per se. So you have IBM volume is decreasing. I uh, don't know if this is a flag to the, you know, to continue to the downside. Like again, it needs to give me a, a little dip and more to the upside before I get excited. Facebook volume is dying. Um, so we just have to see what's going on. It still has bearish MACD, still getting to that 10 day moving average. <coughs> Excuse me. So we really have to see what's going on. Cores, cores gave an engulfing pattern, look like more like a flag. And this, if this breaks down, it's under the 50. It could, it could move. It could move to the downside. So, um, you know, be aware of that because this could be a setup. You know, if you look at the, yeah, if it gets below this low, I mean, it has a lot of, you know, you're talking about 66 level at a stock that's, a, you know, you're talking about almost a 10% rip down to the to the next pivot point level so just be very very careful with that uh price line actually looked weak today um again given another flag you know kind of going from there and uh you know it's really looking kind of weak today from here so uh that's not that good for this name i mean you know money is circulating around so you really just don't want to you know jazz again biotech uh not looking good uh you got Biogen, not looking good again, might be another flag um, right here. So these are things that you could get to the short side with if you wanted to. Um, who else we got? We got Jazz. We got, again, another one just showing a little bit of weakness, the volume. Okay, so right now I would need something else to, to at least break this level here or Give me some other candle to roll back down. So, uh, who else we have? Now let's see what Walmart's doing. Walmart might be flagging uh, to the upside, actually. So, you know, you have, and flags aren't perfect, but at least maybe you have this pennant or something like that to the upside. But, or I can make, you know, a flag like, you know, I don't feel like doing all this, but you get the point. I hope you get the point. So, um, I can see a flag kind of like that. Let me see if I can really. There you go. Kind of like that. So, um, maybe that's uh, going to the upside, and you could really, um, you know, just make sure you're, you're looking at this stuff. Kind of see what's what's going on. A uh, save actually gapped up and drove higher. So, really want to see what's going on with this one. This looks really good, and I want to show you a, a chart. Sometimes you can look and win. I want you guys to really look out for when. Uh, damn, it won't give me the chart. Shoot. Um, let's see what we can do. Uh, weekly, 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 weekly. So you kind of have this. This is a cup and handle that broke out. 
So I wanted to show you on the yearly, it actually had like a really crazy big cup and handle that you can see, but you have the cup, handle, broke above 37. And uh, if you look at the daily, it's above 37. Yep. So um, if, if this breaks over 40, I'm in. I, I like this. I mean, I really, really like this this stock, and I just got to do some more homework on it. But I like this one. So there's a couple more names. Again, got to do my homework over the weekend. It's got a long weekend. Remember, no trading on Monday. And uh, trade them well, man. I mean, listen, man. It was a you know, if you didn't trade at all this week because you didn't feel comfortable. There's nothing wrong with that, you know. And, and don't feel like you have regret because what happened if you went in and then you lost? You say, oh, I should have, should have, could have, would have. The past is done. The future, what did it say? The, the past is done. The future, you don't, is unknown. And the present, and today is the present, is a gift. That's why they call it present. Ah, how about that? I remember that. Uh, so also, don't worry about, like I said, with knowing everything, trading everything. You can't know everything. And this is something that my grandmother actually told me, which was kind of enlightening, and I've kept it as humbling and ego free as possible but she told me which something was like wow you know she said to me they can make a world out of what you don't know so are you going to harp on that and try to learn everything in the world or are you just going to say listen i can't know everything i can't trade every instrument i can't see everything you know and at the end of the day i trade what makes me comfortable and that's what this is all about you know some people write credit spreads make some comfortable double spreads makes them comfortable long term you know options trading makes it comfortable you know weeklies makes them comfortable whatever fits your style is what you need to understand and what makes you comfortable at the end of the day so um again i've gone over my time i'm i'm, I'm actually gonna have to stop at five minutes for once but i'm at my longest i've been in a long time so again i'm getting long-winded so have a great long weekend and uh look at those charts and and you know it doesn't take many you don't have to trade 50 positions you could trade two for the day and you could be good to go so with that take care smacks